Captain Jack Sparrow is arriving into port, and his ship is sinking, and oddly enough, he doesn't seem to care. Now, we might think, being a pirate, he's very mischievous. He probably killed someone or stole the ship, or just generally found some other way to pay zero price for the ship. But that's not a very good explanation, because when the ship sinks, he's still losing whatever he could have sold the ship for, even if it did have a hole in it. What's more likely is that he was having to bail out the ship with the bucket, and once he lost his bucket, he knew that it would be inevitable that his ship would sink and would become a sunk cost. That there would be nothing he could do to recover what he lost when the ship sank. Now there's an idea that makes waves. I'm just Here's another example. In this scene, Elizabeth Swan is using her necklace to bargain with Captain Barbosa. What if she's thinking to herself, well, I've had this necklace a long time, and since I was a little girl, it was my intention to wear this necklace at my wedding. If I bargain with it now, all that time that I've kept the necklace until now would have been for nothing. Well, that shouldn't factor into her consideration. The time she's already spent holding on to the necklace, intending to wear it on her wedding day, is a sunk cost. She should only be thinking about the present and future benefits and costs of trading her necklace with Captain Barbosa. If the cost of losing her necklace and not being able to wear it at her wedding is less than the benefit that she will get from trading for it, the amount of time that she's already kept and protected the necklace in order to wear it at her wedding shouldn't factor into her decision at all. She's lost that time no matter what, and it is a sunk cost. As a final point, remember to be careful when expecting pirates to honor their verbal contracts. Steal the guns and stores. Pick them in, set the flags to make good the clear point. You have to take me to shore. According to the code of the order of the Reverend. First, your return to shore was not part of our negotiations nor our agreement, so I must do nothing. And secondly, you must be a pirate for the pirate's code to apply, and you're not. And thirdly, the code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Welcome aboard the Black Pearl, Miss Turner.